Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Friday demo. Uh, we're going to be doing another dustpan pour, another variation of a dustpan pour this evening. I'm excited about it. It's a little bit different. I haven't tried this. Uh, well, I tried it once before. It was uh, a little shaky, but we're going to do it again. I think we're going to have better results because I've changed something up. So welcome, everyone. And uh, um, I'm going to be working on a 16 by 20 canvas today, uh, tonight for this demo. I've got my great big dustpan, the, the great big giant one here. That's, I think, the trick. We need a larger surface area for with our dustpan. And I've got a bunch of colors. I'm using a lot of the same ones I used in our uh, Painting Night Live in the membership uh, this prior Wednesday uh, when we did three different demos. So you'll see some of those same colors. Only it's going to be a, a little bit different uh, result, hopefully. So let's get going. Um, I'm going to flip the camera and we'll go through the colors. And uh, then we'll start having some fun. So let me uh, flip the camera here. And here we go. So I've got this dark color. It's kind of a black and there's a little blue in it. So it's kind of a, a really dark gray color. And that's going to be our base coat color on our, our canvas. Then I've got this metallic purple. I've got kind of a two dark colors, two kind of mid-value colors, and then, well, maybe three mid-value colors, and then one light color here. So I've got this metallic purple from Artist Loft. Uh, again, here, I'll just show you the tubes. I love this color. Uh, I use it all the time. It's a very brilliant, uh, shiny, metallic-y purple that I really like. And this color is a metallic cobalt green or i'm sorry metallic cobalt blue it is like it's a teal color but they call it cobalt blue but that doesn't look blue to me that's it's like it's a turquoise color but whatever so that's metallic uh cobalt blue slash turquoise i'll say and then we've got uh the bright aqua green right here from uh liquitex basics uh this is a really kind of bright uh, turquoisey color which uh, I like a lot, kind of a, a brighter color than our metallic blue there. Uh, so that's what we have there. This one is kind of a, a hodgepodge of things. It's mostly white. So there's mostly white in here. And then there's a little bit of uh, pale blue from Master's Touch. I just wanted a really light uh, shade of blue. So that's what we have here. This is gold, just a plain old, uh, let's see, where is my gold? It's just regular Liquitex Basics Gold. And then this one is Metallic White from Artist Loft. So one of my favorite colors to use. It likes to create a lot of cells, which I love. So Metallic White and a little bit of silver in here as well. So just a little bit of just the Artist Loft uh, silver too. I just wanted it to be a little off-white, uh, kill that super bright white a little bit and add a little bit more sparkle with some silver. So those are our colors. And I've got a little tiny three ounce cup here. This is going to be our open cup for uh, what we're going to put inside the dust pan before we uh, uh, move and transfer that paint to our surface. So let's get going. Um, I'm going to put this aside for the moment. I'm going to put a base coat down in our um, big old giant dustpan here. I'll do that now, and then I'll flip the camera so you can get a close-up view of what's happening. So I just kind of want a, a, a pretty good surface to work in, and all the colors are going to be kind of uh, flowing in and uh, into this base coat. I'm going to just move it around here a little. So the base coat is going to play a big role in this uh, technique. And I have right here, this is just a thin, it's a half inch piece of wood, just a scrap piece of wood. I just need to prop up this dust pan just a tiny bit, um, just so it's the paint doesn't start flowing out of it yet. So, okay, so we've got that all set up. We're going to uh, flip the camera here so we get a close-up of what's happening. And I'm going to just put my little cup right in the middle 
of our dustpan and then start just randomly putting colors in here. I'm not putting them in in any kind of real specific order other than I think I'm going to use the purple first, um, the metallic purple. The first colors you put in uh, to an open cup are the kind of the first ones to flow out under the base coat. Uh, so it's kind of a cool effect. Uh, so I kind of want that dark next to, or that dark purple or metallic purple next to our base coat. This is the bright aqua green here. And I'm just trying, I'm just eyeballing the amounts of paint. Um, there's no specific amount that I'm going for other than I want to, I don't want to have tons and tons of paint. Um, I do want to have some negative space on our painting. So probably about, you know, five to seven ounces in my dustpan is probably what I'm going for. So that was the light blue. I'm going to put in a little uh, gold next. So any moment, moment now that uh, paint will start to pop out inside our um, in the base coat here. I'm going to put some more of the turquoise. And how about some more purple? I see um, it's starting to peek out here and there. Um, it might be tough to kind of see that on the on the camera. Here's some of our white. This is the metallic white. I don't know if I've used that yet. That might have been the first uh, layer. Here we go. There's some cool things happening in the back here. Uh, what's next? Let's put a little more gold in. So again, I'm just kind of randomly choosing these colors. And here's the light blue. And maybe a little more, I'm getting, I'm, I think pretty close to the end of my paint, I think. Maybe a couple more layers, a little more white. And a little more gold, and I think this will be it. Okay, so we've got some cool things happening. Some cells are starting to emerge. I'm going to just lift this off quickly and just take a look at the center, which doesn't look too great. It's just a, it's just kind of a bunch of rings of color, this big golden blob. I don't love that. I'm going to put the cup back on and kind of twirl it around here a little bit. Just very delicately and lightly uh, twirl that cup kind of inside our colors. There we go. That looks cool. That's interesting. We've got kind of this cool spirally thing happening. I've got a little bit of paint coming out here. I'm going to just move it back a tiny bit. So I'm going to have to move my dustpan off. Then we're going to put our base coat down. So I'm going to flip the camera first. And we're going to need this. I'm going to move these paints off to the side. And I need to prop that back a little bit more. I'm going to grab my, so my paint is wanting to flow out of there. Just get back in there. So I'm going to move this off and get a little taller kind of stand for it. So I can kind of chill out there for a moment while I put the base coat on. And I'm just going to spread this out with my palette knife. And 
while that cane is sitting in there, it's going to be doing some cool things. Uh, it's just kind of mixing together and interacting. All the colors are kind of interacting. I cannot see it. It's creating some cool cells. So um, that's a little tip. If you do a, an open cup pour, and I, I, am, I am guilty of this, uh, if you don't start tilting it right away, if you just let it kind of sit there for a little while and uh, let the paints kind of mingle around with each other, uh, you get some very cool effects before you start tilting. And I'm often very impatient and I don't let that happen, but uh, it's a good tip and it will help uh, create some very cool effects. Okay, so this is almost done here. I'm putting this on a tiny bit thicker than I normally would, just so it's a little easier to tilt. I don't know how much tilting we'll be doing, but if we do any tilting, uh, it'll be pretty easy to tilt. Okay. And so I'm just going to torch this quick, get rid of some air bubbles. There we go. All right. Let me move this cup out of the way. Let's grab our dustpan here. and see what's happening. So we've got lots of cool cells happening in here. They've kind of started to pop up and uh, I, I'm liking what we've got. We did that little twirl and that can that little twirl is also a little mechanical friction in your paint, which can cause some cells to appear. So I like to do those little twirls in there. So let's go ahead and tilt this out, or I'm sorry, um, just pour it out. I'm gonna pour it in, I'm not exactly sure yet. I think I'm gonna start down at this corner and then kind of work my way around. I don't really have any kind of plans for a composition other than hoping for something interesting. I want to be careful with how fast the paint flows out of the dustpan. We're getting some cool things happening. Maybe all oh, that color. Oh, there we go. So I got a big kind of blob of the base coat down there, but I can just scrape that up and save it and use it again. So there we go. We've got the paint out in kind of big crazy ribbon. And uh, I think we definitely need to do a little tilting because it looks like very like amoebic and weird. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So I'm just going to go kind of slow and gradual here. Just let the paint kind of come down towards me, stretch it out a bit. We've got some cool cells. Okay, I'm going to just turn it around. So all of our gold is kind of over in that corner. So I'm going to try to coax it over a little bit into the other part of the painting. But as we're stretching here, you know, the paint's moving and getting a little bit thinner, so more things are going to start to pop up. 
this is kind of like a, a typical open cup pour only we've you know just spread it out over this larger area let's see here So I'm just getting a feel for what the paint wants to do, like how it's moving. We're getting lots of cool cell action over in this side, which I quite like. All right. So I think I'm going to tilt off some of this paint right here. It's like right up to the edge. So I'm going to tilt some of that off. I like to uh, usually cover at least one or two edges, at least with some color. Here we go. Now we'll go back. All right, so let's see. What else do I want to do? I really like all this stuff over here. I think I might tilt off a bit of this to try to bring some of this, the cool gold stuff over a little bit into the painting a bit more. I'm not sure if I can get it over there. I don't need it all the way to the other side, but a little more in maybe the closer to the center. Yeah, it's moving over there, I think. All right, so I'm just going to bring that kind of back a little bit. Okay, let's turn it around and just take a take a peek at it. I really like what's happening. I think it's a cool uh, painting, kind of a interesting composition. I think one of my favorite things with the dustpan pour are these wonderful edges you can get all the way around your shapes, uh, especially these kind of roundish uh, shapes here, these interesting round edges. I just love that. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with what we've got right there. I don't know if I want to do any more. Uh, we got some cool little negative space. We got this big one. The only thing I don't love about this one is it's very rectangular. I don't love that. I wish we could get a little bit more of a tilt or something. Maybe I'll try to tilt that a little bit. But I like this one down over here, this interesting negative uh, shape. So let's see here. I'm going to try to maybe just tilt that a little bit just to see if I can get that to... I don't think I can... It doesn't bug me that much, but it would be kind of cool if you could get a little bit more movement, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So let's see here. You know, it's not really doing what I kind of want it to do. So you can kind of tell just the way the paint wants to move. If you can kind of coax it in the direction you want, but sometimes you just can't. And the reason in this case is the bulk of my paint is over here now. This has gotten very thin. And so I don't have enough paint over here to kind of 
make this uh, move easily. So I'm just going to kind of go back to kind of how I had it and probably call that call that good. So there we go. Let's see here. And I got some um, recommendations, which are good. Uh, let me just move this up here. And uh, Monique's got a, a good idea. She as she says, maybe if you put black on this side, you could get it to move. And I might, that's a good idea. If you put a, a pool of black here, you can kind of, you know, nudge this paint over. Let's give it a try. Why not? That's a good idea. And uh, Susan says something similar. Could add uh, color to that side or corner. Yeah, and then uh, also Donna has that. So I got some great suggestions. So let's give it a try. So here I have some more black in my cup. So I'm just going to pour this kind of in a circle, um, kind of a puddle right here. And adding all that extra black, but if I tilt that, it should act as like a barrier here and kind of nudge some of this paint over. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and it's working. It is working great. Yeah, I don't need to do too much. I like that even more now. It's a much more interesting uh, shape. So I'm going to bring this and pull it back a little bit. And see, I really like, it's also wanting to follow our, our pool of black. I really like this, this point. It's kind of pulling that out. I don't want it to get too far out there, though. So I'll just move it back. So there we go. I'm going to just leave it like that. Great job, members. Excellent ideas. So here we've created this very interesting edge now by adding that little uh, pool of color. Um, and I really love this peak that we got. So that turned it into a much more interesting painting, just like that. So that is awesome. And then um, Cinda has got a question. She's asking, if you put the base coat in between some of the layers, would it give you more of a galaxy effect? Well, yes, you could have put, um, like when I was layering the open cup, if I had put some of the black in there, the black would have also kind of mingled with some of these other colors. And you'd have more black um, throughout the painting. I didn't do that. Normally, I like to include the base coat in a lot of my um, layers. But I didn't do it in this, this time just because we had so much uh, black and I had such a large amount of base coat in the dustpan. So I just went with the, with the colors. But you could have gotten a little more of a galaxy look, I think, uh, if you had incorporated a little more of the black in there, sure. You, know, you never know for sure. But um, yeah, it would have probably helped. All right. So I think I think that's good. I really like this painting. Uh, it turned out pretty nice. We got tons of cells uh, with the open cup technique. And um, we were able to kind of stretch them around and tilt them. Like, these are pretty crazy looking cells in here. A lot of this is because of the white, uh, the metallic white in there. It creates these very cool looking cells. 
but um, I really like kind of the whole overall thing. We've got a lot of gold popping up now, which I quite like. So we were able to kind of get that moved around and then new cells popped up with the gold. So it's a little more evenly uh, spread. So, and then this pool here, I've got a lot of black right here, but I'm not too worried about it because it will dry uh, flat. And it will be, once all that water evaporates out of there, everything should be nice and flat. So like after the video is done, I can go and kind of touch the rest of my edges, uh, just add a little black to the rest of the edges. And uh, this will be done and just we'll let it sit and dry. And we'll have a very interesting, kind of crazy uh, open cup dust pour painting. So, all right. So let's see here. So that went pretty quickly, actually. Um, let me jump back. And uh, uh, we did a painting kind of similar to this. It's right behind me. Uh, we did this one in our uh, Wednesday uh, membership class, um, our Pouring Night Live. And this was a triple ring pour. We did three ring pours in a base coat and then put that on our uh, 16 by 20 canvas. That turned out pretty interesting. It's kind of a weird painting, kind of like this one is. Um, this one has definitely more cells because it was a different technique. But uh, I quite like the one behind me there that we did. It dried very nicely. So any questions that you might have about our, our weird dustpan experiment? <laughs> so I wasn't sure if it was going to work, um, but it worked quite nicely. So I'm happy about that. All right. All right. And great. Thanks for all the... Uh, Thanks for all the tips and the great advice on the uh, extra paint. That was genius. See, my my members are very smart. <laughs> so, all right. Just checking to see if I missed any uh, questions that might have come in. I don't see any yet. Donna says she had a, a weird dream that marbles were in her dustpan while she was dumping it out. Marbles rolled out everywhere. <laughs> that is weird. Um, that is a, a great idea, though. Um, if you had just poured puddles, you could pour puddles in your dustpan and then roll a, mold, uh, roll a marble around inside them to make like a marble roll in your dustpan and then pour it out, let the paint stream out. That would be a very cool uh, technique, too. So there's a lot of different ways uh, to kind of modify a dustpan pour. Um, it's a very kind of straightforward technique, but you can um, alter it and change it in a whole lot of different ways, which is kind of cool. It's kind of a fun, fun one. And uh, Monique has got a question, and she's asking, if you could only use four colors in a painting, which ones would you use? Oh, that's a... There's so many different answers you could have for that one. Um, but me personally, if I could only use four, only four colors, well, gold would have to be one. I use gold a lot. Um, gold would be one. Payne's gray probably would be another one. Those two are two of my favorites. Um, probably metallic blue. Uh, number three, that's like one of my favorite colors of all time. And probably a white, um, white or metallic white or very, very light shade of, of white or off-white. So those would probably be the four. If I had to only use four, um, I, I've used those, those four or variations of those four many, many times. I just love those colors. There's a, that one behind me is basically those four colors, this blue one right here. So that's a good question, Monique. And it's actually, that's a, that's a great question. And it's a great um, thing to think about and give yourself some limitations uh, when you do some paintings and see what you can come up with. So if you could only use four colors or uh, if you could only use three colors, um, I probably wouldn't go uh, less than three. Three is about the minimum, I find. But uh, those are great um, questions to Kind of limit yourself and see what you can achieve with those limitations. So great question. 
And Carla says she's still working on getting the paint out of the pan. And yeah, that is by far the toughest part of this technique is controlling that paint as it flows out because um, it wants to come out really fast. So one thing you could try, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure you've tried this already. You could, you could try to thicken your paints just a little bit. Um, you don't want too thick of a paint, otherwise it, you have a hard time getting the paint out. But, um, but that all, it just takes a little bit more practice. Um, that is by far the hardest part is controlling the paint um, with this technique. And uh, Carla is asking, um, am I ready for some football? Absolutely. That's a that's an important question right there, Carla. And matter of fact, the Packers are playing the 49ers this evening, tonight. So I'll, in a, their first preseason game, I'll check out a little bit of that. Um, I love the Packers. So Packers are my team. I was, ra I was born in Wisconsin. So um, we'll see what the Packers can do. So go, go pack. <laughs> so um, it should be a whole, it should be a very fun season. Uh, I like, I like lots of football. I'm not just, uh, I like lots of different teams. I like the Chargers. They were in San Diego. Now they're in LA. Um, I like Kansas City a lot. Um, I'm excited about the Raiders. So I like a whole lot of different teams. So I follow football uh, pretty closely. And, uh, but the Packers are my number one team, I'd say. So, all right. Okay, any other questions you might have, football-related or painting-related? Uh, throw them in here, and I'll be happy to answer. Otherwise, uh, I'll, I'm going to go watch some football and uh, um, have some dinner. That's going to be the rest of my evening. So, okay. All right. Well, thanks so much. I don't see any other questions coming in, but thanks so much for joining me. This is a fun, uh, relatively quick demo. But um, I really like the way it turned out. And give these a try. Um, you know, you can try this specific technique or any other type of dust pour technique. Um, they're really, really fun to do. And uh, again, just be careful controlling the paint. Uh, let it come out as kind of as slow as you can at first till you get a feel for uh, the dust pan. That's the hardest part. So thanks so much, everyone. Have a great weekend. And uh, Donna has, is asking me, how much did I bet on the game? Oh, ne zero. I never bet on uh, football or any sports or anything, really. I'm not much of a betting man. Um, but so it's just a lot of fun to watch. So, OK, everyone. Well, thanks so much. Uh, thanks for the great questions. Thanks for the great uh, ideas and uh, tips. Uh, we created a pretty cool painting together. So thanks so much. Have a great weekend. I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.